Hello, Assalamualaikum. Hi everybody. So um, now today uh, we gonna gonna learn uh, about dark system design. Welcome to my next lecture. Um, just wait for a second. So let's see what we're gonna learn today. We're gonna see the design overview and the um, methods that we can use in designing our system. All right, it's very essential that in a, a design we should take uh, three things into fact. Uh, into account which is the space limit sorry uh, here oh my god this the space limit um, how much space that we have in our plenum or ceiling and of course in a design we try to minimize the noise and the third factor is the cost that is uh, specified by the client. We do not want to exceed the cost that is already um, specified. As I mentioned before in my previous lecture, we can suggest to them what is the best, um, uh, I mean, which design is the best for their, their, their building but it depends um, sometimes uh, due to the cost restriction customer will reject uh, the suggestion all right the round duck uh, sorry the as we heard uh, here, uh, from the seminar from Mr. Chung last time the ratio that we would want to maintain as close as possible to one to one that means the width to height ratio um, if possible it should be one to one but never exceed one to three all right and the system um, normally for rigid duct we use um, rectangular duct and for the flexible duct we use uh, round duct that is um, near the outlet near the exit or diffuser we wouldn't use round duct just for fun that means if it is not required um, or the distributed air uh, is not specified to be um, for precision for example um, then it is better to use rectangular duct because it is uh, more cheaper but the disadvantage of a rectangular duct is the its pressure drop is higher than the round duct so in round duct because due to the round cross section uh, it has lower resistance that's why the pressure drop is lesser and therefore the price of the round duct is higher and the second rule uh, normally um, the width of the rectangular duct should be greater than the height if we have uh, uh, enough space limit because uh, this arrangement if the width is greater than the height then the duct is more stable unless we don't have enough space then we have to turn it upside down uh, I'm sorry to turn it uh, the other way around which is height is greater than width 
if only we do not have the enough space. If not, then the width should be greater than the height of the duct. Duct cross section. Alright, this is basically a table um, to see the equal friction rate at 15,000 CFM um, of distributed air. What we want to show here is actually um, we can convert uh, the size of a roundup. If we know the size of a roundup and we know the uh, CFM, we can actually know the size of uh, the other the other form of duct. For example, you know the CFM and you know the equal friction rate, then you can choose the uh, round duct size or the equivalent uh, rectangular duct size by using duct calculator or as we always mention duct to later or you can also choose uh, if you know the CFM and know the velocity um, then you can also choose the size for uh, round duct or equivalent rectangular duct the most important thing is we choose uh, the right form of duct, which is uh, rectangular or round duct. The second rule is the ratio of the width to the height of the cross section of the duct, if it is a rectangular duct, must be as close as possible to one to one and must never exceed uh, one, two, three. And the third rule, it should be the width of the duct should be greater than the height of the duct. Just to recap again. Alright, what does it mean duct design? Normally duct design, we, we uh, want to Determine the duct size, what type of material it is, what size it has, um, uh, what type of duct uh, and you has to you have to take all the factors into account just like we said before the three factors. Other factors that also need to be considered are the total pressure and also the duct layout. Normally, first we uh, we should know the load of a building. Then we should have uh, the total pressure and we have the duct layout. Uh, how many diffusers that you want to use? Then only then, then you can design your uh, your type of duct and also the duct size. You have to know the purpose of the room, whether, uh, for example, it is an exhaust uh, for chemicals or just for normal room. There are three most common methods to size duct. First it is a velocity reduction. Normally we use the velocity reduction method um, where there is significant um, velocity differences. Uh, for example, after the filter and before the filter. So the, the, the distance between the before and after the filter, uh, we use the velocity reduction method. The second method is the equal friction method, which, which is used for small to big ducting network. Um, and like its name, 
equal friction method that means for the whole system uh, for the most part of the system we should assume uh, a friction rate a friction loss rate uh, which is equal for all parts of the system except for the certain part that may be uh, like I said before before and after uh, a filter then we use only for that part uh, the method that we call velocity reduction method the third method that we have is static regain this is for large and high velocity ducting system and it is rarely used because it is quite expensive. Alright, for velocity reduction method Okay, we should assign a velocity to the very section of the duct system and of course the highest is at the entrance or the supply, the first supply, the first, uh, I mean, before it is distributed to rooms. Alright, so the velocities in the succeeding or the next section, for example, after um, it is distributed to room A, then um, it should be, the velocity should be reduced uh, and uh, after a while, um, until it comes to section B or room B, it should be further reduced until the lowest at the end of the term. And the air quantity for each section should be known already. And we have to cross check um, the velocity range that is allowable for the type of the building for example we have public building then uh, we should refer the table how much is the range of the allowable velocity so then um, even though we reduce the velocity it would be it wouldn't be uh, lower or higher than the allowed range of velocity Yes, this is the table that I mentioned. For example, we have um, the velocities, recommended velocities for residences, uh, recommended velocities for school, theatres and public buildings. And the last one is the velocity, uh, recommended velocities for industrial buildings. However, in this um, table also we have the range for maximum velocities. We can see on the left side of the uh, table, we can see it is stated there um, which section this uh, velocities is responsible for. For example, we have main ducts branch ducts, rises, filters, and so on. And the velocities that we choose shouldn't exceed the maximum velocity, the, the maximum velocities that is stated here. And this table, normally we can uh, read from the duct calculator or ductulator. Um, and there's table also recommended maximum duct velocities for high velocity systems all right it is different than the low velocity systems and VR stands for velocity reduction method it is empirical and you have to really judge to you have to uh, give reasons why you select that uh, velocity because there is no um, I mean right or wrong answers as long as um, the velocities is still in range and your selected uh, 
duct size is uh, does make sense. For example, your uh, flexible duct can never be greater or bigger or equal to the rigid main duct because then you cannot connect both the main duct and also the branch duct. It doesn't make sense. It simply doesn't make sense. Then your design will be a trash then. Okay, let's see an example. Here it is said uh, that you should determine the dark work size of a sketch below for public building by velocity reduction method. And I would say this is for low velocity, uh, low velocity. Um, and please calculate the friction factor or we can call it friction loss for each duct for its respective length. So you should give um, your attention to, uh, to every detail of the question. Just let's say if it is said that friction loss for each duct, just like that, then you can give your answer um, per 100 feet. But if it is said here, uh, friction loss, please find friction loss for each duct for its respective length. Then you have to times um, with the length of the duct. For example, for the section B to C, the length of this duct is 14 feet. That means if you have 0 0.1 friction loss, if you determine, if you um, set your friction loss rate for the section BC is 0 0.1 in the equal friction method, then uh, you have to times uh, 14 feet with 0 0.1 per hundred. I hope you 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 do not confuse here. I hope that you understand what I'm trying to tell you. But since this is a velocity reduction method, then uh, yeah. Because you need uh, from the velocity reduction method and you know the CFM, then you can select the size of the duct and you also can read the friction factor from duct calculator or ductulator. Then you have to times, uh, for example, 0 0.1 per 100 length, 100 feet length, times the 14 feet so that you get the friction factor for the whole length of the section, for example, here BC. All right. Let's let's see the steps of um, of the design. After you have the cooling load, then you know how much is the total CFM. Um, for example, here you can calculate first calculate the total CFM of the whole system for every section. Then um, you will have. For this case, is 6,000 CFM. And then, the second step is you select the velocities of various duct section. It is to be reminded again that the biggest velocity should be at the entrance. And please use the table that is shown on the next slide. Alright, here, we know that main duct um, the recommended velocities for the main duct is 1000 to 1300 feet per minute. However, in the table also stated that for the main duct, the maximum velocities for the main duct is between 1100 to 1600 feet per minute. So, you can select actually any velocity within this range 
For example, uh, here in this case, we choose 1,400 feet per minute, and we we should also see what is the maximum velocities for the branch duct. For um, in this case, for public buildings, for branch duct, the range is between 800 and 1,300. That means the lowest velocity at the end of your duct is minimum uh, 800 feet per minute. You cannot be, uh, the velocity cannot be lower than 800. Alright, so actually you can choose any velocity. For example, um, the, from B to C, the velocity that you choose is uh, 1,400 and then from C to D is um, 800. Yeah, like the previous slide. A uh, couple of hundreds, I mean, but not less than 800. For example, you choose um, 1100, and then from D to E, you further reduce the velocity to uh, 1000, and E to 7 maybe 800 or 900 and e to 6 maybe again uh, 900 or 1000 the main thing is you have to keep the range in check and also um, the velocity should be reduced as it goes far the move uh, further um, from the entrance and the lowest velocity should be at the end of the dark system and in this case is from E to 7 <sighs> yeah this is the recommended um, velocity for this example for E5, D3, C1, you select 900 and for section 56, 34 and 12, you select 800 FPM. Alright, by using dark calculator, as I said before, if you know the CFM and your velocity, then you can determine your dark size, uh, whether it is round or rectangular. But in our case, normally for rigid dark, we choose rectangular because it is cheaper when the client uh, doesn't give any specification or um, the pressure loss is not that important in the system then um, yeah you, you you really have to uh, take every factors into account if the pressure loss uh, you, you you need lower pressure loss but of course the the cost will be higher and so on because if you have the money then why not and um, after you know the size uh, from ductilator you can also read the friction rate or the friction loss um, for the section for the duct section and please multiply with the respective length because uh, in the question, uh, you are asked to calculate um, the friction loss for the whole length of the duct section. Alright, so this is an example, a table example. Um, here you can put uh, on the left, on your left, you can put in the first column 
the notation of the duct section and the second column is a capacity in CFM this one uh, normally it is already um, given and the third column is velocity um, that you choose again I want to remind you that uh, in this column you need to check the allowable maximum velocity range for the respective buildings for the type of buildings and the fourth and the fifth uh, column is actually the size of the duct one is for a round duct and the other one is for a rectangular duct and uh, it is again to be reminded uh, uh, that the width if possible the width must be greater than the height and at the end for the last one is a friction uh, rate in water gauge per 100 feet that you can actually read from the ductility according to the size that you choose you can adjust uh, the size uh, so that you will have the lower friction rate if possible if the cost allows you all right the second method is the equal friction method um, due to its name the equal friction method equal equal means the same that means for the whole uh, duct section if possible you uh, use the same friction loss uh, normally in industry some industry use uh, 0.1 water gauge per 100 feet um, and some other use 0 0.15 inch water gauge per 100 feet well it depends uh, if it is not stated then um, for our exam we just use 0 0.1 inch water gauge per 100 feet all right um, and this um, chosen friction loss rate in inch water gauge per 100 feet should be maintained or must be maintained uh, should be maintained throughout the system where it's not possible then you are allowed to use a velocity reduction method And the design friction loss rate depends on allowable velocity in the duct. You have to cross check with the uh, allowable velocity also. For example, in public buildings, how much is the velocity allowed? Um, if the friction loss that you choose um, uh, result uh, in a certain uh, duct size and after you check and if you read from the doctor later the velocity uh, exceed or less than the allowable velocity of the duct then you cannot choose um, the friction, le uh, friction loss rate sorry all right so basically um, the typical design coefficient loss ranges from 0 0.08 to 0 0.15 inch uh, water gauge per 100 feet of duct. It depends. So this is an example. You should um, determine the rectangular size for each section of system by using equal friction method and the capacity of airflow is as indicated in the figure and this is an industrial system so you need to check what is the allowable velocity for an industrial system both for the main duct and also um, for the branch duct All right, the step one um, is also the same like velocity reduction method. First, you, you need to 
first you need to um, you need to see uh, what is the total CFM uh, for the system this one you know from the uh, cooling load that you calculated before you design uh, this duct, air duct system and for this example we have 9000 CFM um, and if you check uh, from the table uh, rate, friction rate is to Okay, from the friction table for 9000 CFM and also uh, you cross check the uh, main duct the allowable velocity is uh, the maximum sorry the maximum velocity for the duct for the main duct for industrial uh, buildings is 2200 and if you take your duct calculator with 9000 CFM and 2200 feet per minute velocity then uh, your resulted friction rate is 0.21 inch water gauge per 100 feet and uh, for also for industrial building you can see for the main duct um, the, the minimum uh, velocity for industrial buildings is thousand to uh, thousand sorry thousand eight hundred and the corresponding friction rate if you check with the duct calculator is 0 0.125 inch water gauge so now you have your friction rate uh, or friction loss uh, rate between 0 0.21 and also 0 0.125 so this is the range now you can choose any friction rate value within this range yeah, for example in this case we choose 0 0.15 as recommended normally in an industry um, and we help this value uh, we use this value throughout our entire system let's say this is is a normal system there's no special case no chemical used and so on all right the second step is you have to fill in the flow quantities and the design friction rate in the table and by using your duct calculator with known CFM and your chosen design friction rate you can find the size of the round duct diameter and also you can choose uh, your rectangular duct size the step 4 you can calculate your airflow velocity in each section and we know as we know um, the formula for the airflow velocity is equals to uh, Q over A you can check uh, in the earlier lecture and step 5 uh, fill in uh, the result table and this is the example of the table for friction uh, sorry equal friction method the first column on your left you can put your duct section notation and the second column you can put the capacity or CFM uh, for each section and for design friction rate in inch water gauge per 100 feet this one is the value that you choose between the range the resulted range from the known um, equal, uh, sorry the known velocity and also the CFM in the fourth and fifth column you have your uh, chosen uh, round duct size and also the rectangular duct size and at the end you will have your velocity and in this example uh, actually uh, there is no specific I mean 
uh, there is no fixed answer. Uh, you cannot say that your F feet per minute uh, is 1,596. You can just round it up to 1,500 or 1,600. Just round it up. Never use a specific answer like this. That's why I put it in red. Alright, whatever method that you use, it requires um, some engineering judgment and extensive manual recalculation. Um, so you cannot say that if your system is better than other engineers for identical solution, may, you may have different solution than uh, other engineers. And the result uh, thing is you will have different size of components, different fans, different duct size, um, will incur different costs and also the overall system energy demands. This depends on your design but you should uh, keep in mind that you should uh, design the system if possible the lowest cost but the most effective one. Of course. Alright, that's all for me. Uh, thank you for listening and see you in the next lecture. Thank you.